Let's be real simple. Just a couple questions, just to get to know you, know how your your uh, June went last last month. Um, so, are you ready? <sighs> yeah, I'm ready, man. Yeah, um, my last month was awesome. Um, some good things happened. You know, my my niece graduated. Uh, did some stuff for her. Uh, one big thing, my parents came down and spent some time with with me, which is kind of new because they haven't been to this house yet. Now, we've, I've been in Texas now for about 12 years. I think they've been out here maybe twice. So it was a big deal. They came and they came to see my new house. Oh, yeah. Oh, that sounds like fun. T- tell me more about that. I mean, it was really cool. They, they um, My mother and father came out. They brought my aunt and her husband. So it was four people total that came down. Um, Showed them around a little bit, uh, you know, normal stuff. Yeah, well, well, tell me more about what you guys did specifically. It's kind of specifically. Hmm. Um, well, it started off kind of slow. I mean, they got there the first day, I think. I took them. <laughs> they rested the first day. I think they rested the first day, if I remember correctly. And then I took them to my appointment the following day, which was kind of a drag. Yeah, they are falling asleep. But, um... Yeah, it was kind of boring. This is a long wait in there. When I go to the VA appointments, you know, you never lo- know how long those things will be. But I thought this one would be quick because it was on a Friday. But, you know, so we did that. It was 104 degrees when they got here. So it's not the best time to be just out and doing all types of stuff. But, and they're older. They're all like in their s- late 60s, early 70s, I think. So, you know, you got to be considerate of those type of things. Yeah, that makes sense. Definitely got to be considerate. <laughs> so how'd you deal with it? You know, we found a way. Like, um, I think after we left the appointment, I think we went over to Half of Half because my mother wanted to buy some clothes and stuff. She's doing this thing where she wants to travel light, be able to buy stuff when she needs to ship it back home and then travel light back. So that's kind of the, that's the ideal way to travel. You know, if you, if you know traveling a lot, it's ideal not to take a whole bunch of crap because lugging all that stuff around becomes more of a burden so you know i took them to half of half which is my wife's one of her favorite places to shop uh they found some deals my father found some clothes my mother found some clothes aunt gail and uncle billy i think everybody found stuff that they weren't wanted and so it ended up being a successful trip and then uh we went over to this place called 407 barbecue ordered some ribs they were awesome like well we ordered more food than just ribs but the ribs were were the bomb like, they're really good. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know about 407, man. We go there all the time. Yeah, they're really good. <laughs> oh, yeah. So after we left 407, I think we went back to the house and hung out a little bit. Got to hang out with my parents. And then um, we watched a lot of TV. My father has medicinals, and I actually had a gummy, so I partook of a medicinal with my father. That was kind of fun. Tasted pretty good until the last bit. Then it got a little funky in the end. But, hey, <laughs> I got a little buzz off of it towards the end. So that was cool. Um, see, my Uncle Augie came down. That's my father's younger brother. He lives in Texas, too. He's about two hours away from me. But he, him and his wife, Karen, came down. And we went to a winery. So first of all, I cooked breakfast, like, the first couple days. That, that was something I wanted to be able to do. So I was able to cook breakfast for him. Breakfast. And then we went to a winery on one of the days. And that was kind of cool. It was a beautiful place. Uh, took some pretty decent pictures. <laughs> My mother, uh, she basically broke free and got on the microphone and sang a little song, just for a little bit. I'll let you see how it looks. Like, here, check this out. All it took was one trip to Texas.
That was cool, wasn't it? Yeah, that was really cool. Your mother's pretty talented. Yeah, it was a blessing growing up with that voice in the house, you know, just singing to us all the time. The next morning, I took my father. We went for a long walk, so that was kind of cool. Went to go hang out. Um, he met the other guys I walked with, a couple other older gentlemen, and I think he had a decent time. I didn't want him to overwork himself, though, because there's a few hills and long walking. I wanted to make sure he was good. So uh, that was cool. That was really cool. Oh, you walked with your father? That sounds like fun. You guys had a good time? Yeah, it was awesome. I mean, I don't get a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with my father, you know, just in general, just because I've always been gone. Like, I left at 21 on the dot. The Army came and picked me up, and I've pretty much been gone ever since. So I haven't had a lot of time to just kind of hang out with him. So that was cool being able to walk with him and spend that time there. Um, I guess it might have been a little bit much, because here comes the downside. Uh, I think later on that day, he had some type of cardiac event. So we ended up going to the hospital um, to get him admitted and they were working. He stayed there a couple of days. So that was a bit traumatic for everybody involved, including my mother. You know, she was, I did get to see them uh, in more intimate situations where, you know, she's taking care of him. And, you know, he's, he was in a vulnerable state and she was taking care of him. It was beautiful. You know, I, I pray. I'm sure my wife would do the same for me, but yeah, I, I heard him say some things to her that let me know he really loved her and cared about her and saying some things to him in the hospital. It, it was a little scary, a little traumatic. Oh yeah, I can imagine. So, um, but he's okay yet, yeah, right? Oh yeah, he's, he's okay. He's back on his feet now. They, they went back home. Um, I drove them down to, to Austin. They spent the last couple of days with my uncle. But before they did that, of course, you know, I took some more pictures with them. Oh yeah, I forgot to say, ah, I took them over by my in-laws house where they were able to eat, have my uh, father-in-law cook for them. So, you know, that was kind of fun, getting them over there, get, getting my father a chance to meet my father-in-law. So <laughs> it was interesting watching them talk because it was more of a, well, my ghetto was this, <laughs> and my ghetto was this then. Well, my ghetto was this too, and my ghetto was this. And then, you know, my father-in-law's kind of over the top sometimes, so he heard my mom sing, and he's like, oh, seen this, seen this, seen this, seen this. I bet you don't know this. It was, it was really cool. Cool watching them get a chance to interact. So, um, yeah, the food was awesome. We ate really good over there. Um, I think that's it. We, I didn't get a chance to take them to Bucky's. There was so much stuff I wanted to do, but I did work during the day, you know, so I probably should have taken some days off. Maybe that would have been a little, little better. Um, yeah, I think next time I will definitely make sure I take some days off and spend some time with them. It's not like I don't have the time. I've got like tons and tons of hours of overtime, of use or lose overtime, of restored overtime. And with all the different uh, disasters that happen, it's a good chance I'm gonna keep overtime coming. So there's no reason to not use it especially in times where I'm not getting, I don't have the opportunity to make overtime money, so I might as well be taking some time off. So um, yeah, that's something I'm gonna do next time to, to make it better. Uh, my wife always tells me, try and plan better. Man, look at you jumping ahead. I, I didn't even ask these questions. Like, what are you gonna do? <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. But yeah, my, that was gonna be my next question. So the next time they come down, how would you improve it so it's you know even better? Oh man, next time they come down, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's that's the number one thing, man. Just take some time off. Um, yeah, I'll take some more time off. I will have more things planned, like my wife says. Uh, maybe we'll hit up the zoo. Maybe I'll try and make it so it's not in the dead of summer. Maybe the fall is better. Like, I really want them to come down for October because we have the State Fair of Texas. The State Fair of Texas goes on in October and it's a September and October time frame. It's going to be all types of food, fried food, and things to try out. And it, yeah, like it's a lot of good, cool things to see too, and just to experience. So I want them to try and check that out if they can. If not, maybe my sister can come down. She's welcome. Yeah, I think everybody had a good time. I had a good time. Um, if anybody feels like they didn't have a good time or they they said they didn't have a good time. I feel like that might just be them being emotional and saying something that they maybe didn't mean because I do that all the time. People do it all the time. When you get emotional, people say stuff that they don't necessarily mean. So um, 
yeah, I, don't, I take that with a grain of salt, over the shoulder, whatever, how you do it. But um, yeah, this is that was my my last week. We had the graduations, the part birthday parties, and my parents came to spend time with me, which was very big. Um, thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Hey man, thank you for answering these questions. You know, it's, this information needs to be out there. We gotta let the people know. You are definitely right, man. So, uh, yeah. Thanks for watching. I love you. My other sister might be moving out here, so that's cool. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, that's about it. Oh, oh, I did spend some time with my mother where she was able to sing a little bit. I heard her and my Aunt Gail singing. So you got a chance to harmonize a little bit. I got some of that on video. Don't ever lose your skin. So, this is it. Uh, this will be our probably, you know, the last night for this week, because tomorrow we're going to go to Austin, Texas to see Augie, uh, my brother-in-law, my husband's baby brother, one of his baby brothers. So we're just loving it. We're enjoying ourselves. And boy, if you ever get the opportunity just to spend quality time with your relatives, your sisters, brothers, oh, children, aunts, uncles, do it. Because we ain't got but one life. That's it. To make the best of it. Thank you, Jesus, for having me here right now. Right now. Can I do my poem? And if you're looking at this and yes. I'm not here, just know that I lived my life. I had fallen. Hey. But most of all, I know where I'm going and hello, Jesus. Hello, Jesus. Thank you for this time. Glory. Oh, no. I'm going to turn the camera over because uh, I love to hog mics. If you ever look at any of my karaoke, you'll know. <laughs> and I love to be in front of the camera. We won't go to So I'm thankful that my mother made me this way and my father. <laughs> Clifton and Willie Jordan. <laughs> oh, man, man, man. <laughs> Think about this. He didn't die instead of me, but rather in my stead. For he was pure. But as for me, sin has slain me dead. I had no hope. I was undone with a heart as black as night till God the Holy Spirit came and shed convicting light. I should have died and gone to hell to spend eternity with Satan and demons and other souls that were rebels, just like me. But bless his name, my Savior came and took my guilty plea to mighty God, the judge on high, and died to set me free so that I could be a child of God and walk where Jesus led. No, he didn't die instead of me, but rather in my stead. Hmm. I promise I will tell the truth the cowboy told the judge. Then he proceeded to regale the court with details of the grudge that ended in a shouting match and punches being thrown by black and blue combatants whose motives were unknown. I promise I will tell the truth, the barmaid told the court, but her story contradicted what the cowboy did report. I promise I will tell the truth, another witness swore, but his story contradicted the two that came before. So many of us think the truth is what we want or feel, but that's just our perspective. And often it's not real. Truth is truth no matter what. It can't be bent or swayed. Truth, it's simple, black or white. It can't be slightly grayed. Those that don't believe in God, believe this pastel lie. You have your truth, I'll have mine. But then they wonder why the people they depended on are those that robbed them blind. Then they call for justice, but justice they will find requires rules for right and wrong that stem from what is true and what is fair for everyone, not just a group or two. Even some with faith in God have turn blind eyes to what is true. 
because they can't imagine God will really follow through on promises of punishment for those that don't believe. They think God will adjust his truth to fit what they perceive. But the God that made the universe did it with a plan, including what we call free will. Just so you understand, that means you have the chance to choose what's easy or what's true. And too many choose the easy path. So if that's true of you, be warned of all the choices that you make. There's one that has eternal weight. Believe and witness to the truth. And please don't hesitate, for God has made it clear. In truth, there's just one way to guarantee eternal life. Choose Jesus Christ today. Amen. That's how it If you walk into a neighborhood <laughs> and you start to get suspicious because something's going on, this is a neighborhood to you, it's a park, really. Mm -hmm. So we're walking through this park and all of a sudden we see a little guy <laughs> come up to my brother who's bigger than me at that time. And we had two friends with us, about my size, you know, but we're all relatively big guys. And a little guy, guy comes up to my brother and says, hey, MF, give me a four. <laughs> so I got suspicious right away. So I didn't look at the little guy anymore because to me, he was unimportant, right? This little guy, anybody could have beat him. But I started looking around <laughs> at what is going on. So, this is when I found out my brother wasn't as smart as I thought he was. I can't walk just anywhere with this guy because he feels like, with his first reaction, is to take offense to this guy calling him an MF. Mm. But I'm looking around. All of a sudden, he looks at us and says, this MF called me an MF. So he rears back to punch this guy. This little guy just dropped down to his knees and wrapped his arms <laughs> around my brother's legs. <laughs> <laughs> and as soon as he did that, I'm looking and I see guys coming out of trees from across the street. I see guys coming from everywhere. So um, immediately I said, break. <laughs> Which means run. So we started to run. And as we were starting to run, I'm thinking about my brother. And one of the guys that was with us, he was an older guy, about my brother's age. He was just a little shorter than him. He says, Rob, you gonna leave your brother? So I slowed down a little bit to think about this. But then when I saw what was going on, by that time, it was a whole bunch of kids, a whole Maybe Roman one. Saints <laughs> game <laughs> around us. And this guy was raising up a bat. So he said, while well, he was saying, you gonna leave your brother? I was slowing down when I saw that bat go up. I could heal myself. I picked up something. And uh, I said, we got to get away and call the police. But they called the other guy, too. And uh, me, the guy, the, my brother's name was Buck. They called Glenn, who was the guy who said, you're going to leave your brother. <laughs> but me and Benny, we just, I felt like I was flying. Mm. <laughs> and I couldn't stop. <laughs> but we did get someplace and we called the police, but mm. you sort of find out. You have but to you may have. exercise some intelligence. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, and, and, you know I, I got in trouble for that because my father, he was mad at me for leaving my brother, but he didn't see what was going on. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people may get mad at me, but it's a matter of perception. Had they been there, <laughs> they would have been better off to be, to be with me. Oh, Don't want to lose two sons. Okay. <laughs> My 
fire with my uncle. That's only years and years ago. You think you're smart, but you're not. You're only as smart as I think you are. And I don't think you're very smart. <laughs> if you were as smart as I thought you were, you would be real smart. But you're not. You're only as smart as I think you are. And I don't think you're very smart. See, the only thing you messed up that third line. Because if you were as smart as you think you are, you would be very smart. But you're not. You said I. I ain't gonna take my stuff. I know. You ain't gonna take my stuff. It's okay, bro. Like people, uh, the people. <laughs> <laughs> Every family that is a family was put together by God. Mm -hmm. So when God chose our family, it was with Clifton and Lily Jordan. And Clifton and Lily Jordan had six girls and one boy. One thing we all have in common is the gift of gab. Yes, we do. And the take charge intuition. I say that because our mother taught us to always take charge of situations. She told us if you want a thing to be a certain way, you want to be smart, you got to study, go to school and study. If you want to get a good job, you got to take typing and shorthand in high school. Uh, now, know that people talked about Jesus and they're going to talk about you. Let not your heart be weary because all it's going to do is get you sick. Mm -hmm. The least bit of anxiety and stress opens up a, 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 a hole where disease and other things can enter. Now, I say all that just to say this. Every family is different. So the things that we have that are alike in our family could be alike in somebody else's, but it could be entirely different. But it doesn't make our family so much better than others, and it doesn't sure doesn't make our family any worse than others. Whatever family you are in, with whoever is your mother and your father, love them, appreciate them, and realize that had not God put them on earth to have you, you wouldn't be here. Now, whoever's listening to this, know, you should know who your parents are, who your grandparents are, and maybe even your great-grandparents. But I will say this, you better be happy in your life. Life is so short. You are but a vapor, and it's gone. Mm -hmm. So always do the best you can. Treat your brother man the way you want to be treated. Treat your neighbor like he is yourself. And those are simple things that God has put here before you. And then he just said, I don't want you to do it. It's just understand, if you love me, you'll follow my commands. Mm -hmm. And in this dispensation, there are only 10 of them. There used to be over 500. So if we just have to keep 10 commandments, the best of all of them is charity or love. I'll tell you that right now. So. Know that and do it in your life, and you won't have a problem. Now I'm gonna cut that right here like this, and then I'll come back like this. <laughs> I'm gonna do some open mic. Open mic is this: whatever comes to your mind, you have to say it. Somebody may give you a subject, you have to play it. Somebody might give you a song, you gotta sing it. But whatever you do, you gotta do with the ring and the capture an audience, so they'll know you are pretty sharp. Now I can sing, I can rap. And I can go tap, tap, tap. I'd like to give you one of my raps. Somebody give me a subject. Maybe give me a subject. This is like my grandfather, my, my husband. What's the subject? Okay. He's not giving me a subject. Brother Bill, give What's me a subject. What's not being taught in school that should be? There's a thing going on today. They call it school, you see. There's homeschool, there's real school, there's high school, there's grade school. Everything that you can think about can be taught in school, but the best school is homeschool. That's a rule. I like all of the things it stands for because you as a parent or you as a sister or brother, whoever you are that's teaching, you can impart the goal of life without any strife. You can even be real nice and then you can be real ugly. But the best one of all is just to love from not down here, but from up above. There was a golden rule that everybody should know. And if you don't, well, I'm telling you so. It's the rule that talks about what you should do in life, in school, and even in your free time of your own mind. 
let the words flow. Think about what you're thinking of. Because mm -hmm. most of your thoughts come again from above. Everything that you say and do is going to be brought only down to you. Just as it was said earlier, it's someone I think, and that's you. are not as smart as you think you are, or you are as smart as a morning star. Now, I myself, I like to rattle on and on and on and on and on and on. And that's okay, because I'm here today. I don't even have to play. I can sing around, and I can stay in one spot and wiggle and wobble and still have fun. But yet, we got other people that got a gun. We've seen it all, and he talked about school, and they even bring those guns to rule. That's not a good thing, yet it's it's not too bad because it actually ends up being real sad. Once you enter that road of sadness, now you gotta bring back a road of gladness. How you gonna do it? It's up to you. I'm only gonna have one shoe. It's gonna be a good one on one foot. It's going one that I can say, put put for everything this and that, this and that, what a dabba dooba dee behama hot. Now we don't know and it's okay. But to bring it all back home, do all of the things that we have to do, it's one that's real simple and it's up to you. Be yourself and whoever you are. And always know that God created you and he made you unique and beautiful in your own way. And that's just a little word of wisdom for today. But after we finish, we're going to see this on film. I'll probably say, oh my goodness, let me just get him. Because he put it in my face and I don't know why, but I do know it could make me cry. If I see it and I don't like it, I'm going to have to ask him to erase. And that's going to be my safe, safe Amen. for me. Own upon the earth and thy saving health among all nations. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Oh, let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for thou shalt judge the people righteously, and thou shalt govern the nations upon the earth. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield her increase, and God. Even our own God shall bless us. God shall bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. That's Psalm chapter 67. Check it out. Don't take my word for it. Got a twin. Oh. I put that up on this Oh, that's mommy. Bless the Lord. Let me see. Oh! 
Session because yeah. that's awesome. I love, I love the whole thing. Oh, 